Mathematics Level 4, Topic 1, Module 2. Welcome back to Topic 1, Complex Numbers. Module 2, Session 1. Module 2, Session 1 will cover the following content. Learning Outcome 1.2.1, .1, Complex Equations, and Learning Outcome 1.2.2, .2, Complex Roots. Learning Outcome 1.2.1, .1, Complex Equations. Let's now move on to Complex Equations. Complex equations is a new section in level 4. Think carefully about complex numbers. When are two complex numbers equal? They are equal when they are both represented by the same point on an Argand diagram. This means that both their real parts and their imaginary parts are equal. Let's take a closer look at what this means. Given two numbers in standard form, let's say a plus bi and c plus di, they will be equal if A and C, the real parts, are equal, and B and D, the coefficients of I, are equal. So A and C, for each equation, the real parts are equal, and B and D, the imaginary parts, are equal. So, how do we solve complex equations? We follow these four steps. Step 1. Simplify both sides of the equation and write in standard form. Step 2. Equate the real parts. Step 3. Equate the imaginary parts. Step 4. Solve for the unknown variables. Let's look at some teaching tips on complex equations. Always start out with some simple examples. For example, 2 plus 3i is equal to x plus yi. And then work up to some more complex ones. A good knowledge of simultaneous equations is required for this section, so going through some revision might be necessary. It would also be very helpful to revise all the basic operations in standard form before we start this section. The theory itself is simple, but students often struggle with this section. Spend time on this section. It's difficult and it needs more attention than the rest of the topic. The golden rule for complex equations is very, very straight forward and simple. The complex number on the left hand side must be in the standard form and equals to the complex number on the right hand side must also be in the standard form. Now what they normally do is they give one of either left or right hand side in standard form which means you need to apply your basic operations of complex numbers in order to simplify whatever side is not in the standard form to get it to that form. And then you can apply the rule. Let's start off with a simple example followed by a more difficult one. Let's consider the following example. Solve for x and y if. In other words, this is an example of a complex equation. And what is the tool that we're going to use when we need to solve a context complex equation. A, if, because this is what the concept means. If A plus B I is equal to C plus D I, that implies that A is equal to C and B is equal to D. What does that mean? On my left hand side of my equation, I must have the standard form also on the right hand side. So this is my first goal. I first need to look at both sides and simplify it to get it into that form. If I consider this one, my left hand side is already in standard form, which means I need to solve my right hand side. How will I solve my right hand side? I'm going to make use of this tool. in order to get it into standard form, which means I'm going to apply minus 24 over 8i minus 32 over 8. But I mean, we're not heroic here, and we won't want to get heroic. It's first real, then imaginary. So let's rearrange it as such. 
that gives you minus 32 over 8, that gives me minus 4, and then followed by minus 24 over 8, minus 3i. Real imaginary equals to real imaginary. Now I can draw my conclusion. Real left hand side, which is x, is equal to minus 4. And imaginary left hand side is equal to minus 3. And those are the values of x and y. Solving identical complex numbers in standard form using simultaneous equations. Let us solve the following equations. x minus yi equals to i minus 4 plus 2 plus i all over 2 minus i. Now it must be in standard form. Very, very important. Which means that we, may not, uh, we actually are not supposed to proceed with this calculation with this denominator. Let us then eliminate this denominator by multiplying throughout by 2 minus i. Clearly, we can see that we can eliminate this with that. Please, the answer here is not 0, but it's 1. They're identical, dividing each other, the answer is 1. So 1 times 2 plus i, it's the same exactly as 2 plus i. So do not say the answer is 0 here, the answer is 1. Okay, let's multiply throughout. I'm going to start multiplying this. And we multiply that. Then we come with this, same thing here, that's completed. And then we write this one. Done. Now, at this point, it is very important to note i to the power 2 is equal to negative 1. We are working with complex numbers here, ladies and gentlemen. So it's very important to note this, which means that now we'll replace i squared with negative 1. Actually, at this stage, we can just say negative 1 times y, which is negative y. Negative 1, it's i squared times y, it's negative y. Okay, positive times negative is negative 1. Let's then uh, collect like terms. So the ones without x's are going to stay here, and then the ones with x and y's are going to stay on this side. So we can see that 2 plus 4 give us 6, plus i, give us 7. We can see that
we've got a negative 8. Let's just check quickly here. Yeah? This is okay. That is okay. Okay, this one was most negative i. Yes, this was negative i. Let's see that. Because this one was positive. So this was negative i. Which therefore makes this one a positive 1. Because it's negative i, so which is negative, but i squared itself is negative 1. So it's negative times negative, which makes it a positive. Where did we get negative i squared? We got it from negative i times positive i gives us negative i squared. Therefore, negative 8 plus 1 gives us a se negative 7. Negative 7 plus 2 gives us negative 5. Got that. Then, finally, we'll group the imaginary numbers together and the real numbers together. Minus imaginary numbers together. That's sorted. Then, what else do we need now? We therefore have to know that these are real numbers are equal to negative 5. Real numbers. And then, this will be equal to equation 1. We then know that negative x, negative y, actually 2y, negative x and negative 2y, yes, negative x, negative 2y, is equal to plus 7, that we can note as well. Then, this becomes equation 2. We can see that it can be easy for us to eliminate equation 2 from equation 1. How are we going to do that? We're going to say equation 1 multiplied by 2. Then the y section will go. So 2, two times 2 gives you 4x. Negative y times 2 gives you negative 2y equal sign. 2 times negative 5, negative 10. This becomes equation 3. What do we mean now? We mean now we can simply say equation 2 minus equation 3. So we're going to subtract, say, say this equation minus this equation. So we can do that solution here. Negative x, negative x, minus 4x, give us negative 5x. Then, negative 2y, minus negative 2y. Minuses are following each other, we times them, it gives us a positive. So a negative 2y and a positive 2y, they collapse each other and be 0. 7 minus negative 10 gives us positive 17. So this then is the solution for x. The only thing left, we have to subject our, our equation to x, which makes it divided by negative 5, divided by negative 5. Therefore, x is equal to negative 17 over 5. We have to then substitute the value of x into, because here we used equation 2 and equation 3, we're going to have to go back to equation 1. Substitute into equation 1. So what does that give us? It gives us 2, which is this in equation 1, times negative 17 over 5 because that's x minus y is equal to negative 5. I'm going to come here. 
negative 2 times 17, negative 34, all over 5, minus y is equal to negative 5. We want to solve for y, we're going to transpose y to that side and bring negative, y to the, uh, negative 5 to this side. Therefore, negative 34 over 5 plus 5 is equal to positive y. The value of y then becomes, remember at this stage, you can take the whole thing and put it to the left and take the whole thing and put it to the right. No signs will change. It's just a normal transposing. Let's then go into our calculator. Negative 34 all over 5 plus 5 should give us negative 9 over 5 which can be simplified to negative 1.8. So what does it mean? It means that we found the value of x to be negative 17 over 5. We found the value of y to be negative 1.8, also known as negative 9 over 5. Try the following equation on your own or with the person sitting next to you. Solve for x and y. If you're given the equation 3 minus 2i times minus 6 plus i is equal to x plus yi times minus 2 plus 3i. Once you have completed the activity, please offer your feedback to the rest of the group about the general approach you took to solve the problem. Let's have a look at a teaching tip. The problem you have just worked on can be solved in two ways. The first option is to multiply out, simplify each side to standard form, then equate the real parts and equate the imaginary parts, and then solve the simultaneous equations to find x and y. For option two, you can isolate x and yi on one side, simplify the other side to standard form and then equate the real parts and equate the imaginary parts. Which of the two options did you choose? Let's take a look at a video on how to solve this problem. Let us look at the following example. Solve for x and y if 3 minus 2i times minus 6 plus i is equal to x plus yi times minus 2 plus 3i. What is very important, what does this question mean? It means that we need to simplify the left-hand side to a complex number, real imaginary, equals to the right-hand side complex number, real imaginary. Now, there's two ways to look at this question. We can simplify the left-hand side by removing the brackets. We can simplify the right-hand side also by removing the brackets, and then we will have two simultaneous equations. That's the one way of doing it. Or the method that I will suggest is because we have x plus yi already on the right hand side, therefore I will rather bring this complex number over and then simplify the combination multiplication division. And whatever I will then get as my real part will be equal to x and whatever I will get as my imaginary part will be equal to y. So let's start by first writing it in standard form. 3 minus 2i minus 6 plus i over minus 2 plus 3i is equal to x plus y. Why did I do that? Already on my left hand, on my right hand side, I do have my complex number in standard form, which means I just need to simplify this combined multiplication division complex number on my left hand side. Let's simplify my numerator, my top term. 
we're going to get 3 bracket minus 6 plus i minus 2i bracket minus 6 plus i. We're applying the distributive law over minus 2 plus 3i. Then minus 18 plus 3i plus, because a minus and a minus gives you a plus 12i minus 2i squared over minus 2 plus 3i. And this will be equal to x plus yi. This will also be equal to x plus yi. Now let's simplify. Minus 18 plus like terms, 3i plus 12i gives me 15i minus 2. The value of i squared is negative 1. It's very important to do that step because you will see there's going to be a change in the signs over my denominator is equal to x plus yi. And now I'm going to multiply that out. Minus 18 plus 15i. A minus and a minus gives you a plus 2 over minus 2 plus 3i is equal to x plus y. And then finally, minus 18 and a plus 2 gives me minus 16 plus 15i over minus 2 plus 3i is equal to the x plus yi. So now I have simplified my numerator. What do I have here? I do have now the quotient of one complex number divided by another complex number. And whenever we deal with quotient, it's very important to note that we will multiply with the conjugate of the denominator. Minus 2 plus 3i. When you multiply with a conjugate, you change the i sign. Obviously, that's going to become minus 2, remains unchanged. The plus 3i will now become minus 3i over minus 2 minus 3i. And that is still equal to x plus yi. Now we simplify our top as well as our bottom. You will see there you're going to have minus. A minus and a minus gives you a plus. I can multiply it out straight away plus 32. A minus and a minus gives you a plus. 16 times 3 gives you 48i. A plus and a minus gives me a minus 30i. And a plus and a minus gives me a minus 45i squared. Over. Now we can apply the rule. A number with its conjugate, that's going to be real squared plus. Because you multiply with a conjugate to get rid of your i part. So that the product of that will be real squared plus imaginary squared. And this is equal to yx plus y i. Let's continue with this problem on the other side. Now I'm going to simplify my numerator there. It's going to be 32. 48 minus 30 gives you a plus 18i. And obviously minus 45. 
the value of i squared is equal to negative 1 over 2 squared is equal to 4 plus 3 squared is equal to 9 and this is equal to x plus y i. 32 plus 18i. A minus and a minus gives you a plus 45. Over 4 plus 9, it's 13 is equal to x plus yi. Now, 32 plus 45, 2 plus 5, that is equal to 7. 3 plus 4, that's equal to 7. We have 77 plus 18i over 13 is equal to x plus yi. Now we need to separate on the left hand side my real part as well as my imaginary part so that I can apply the rule. 77 over 13. That's going to be my real part. Plus 18 over 13 i. That's going to be my imaginary part. And that is equal to x plus y i. Now we have it in standard form. Real imaginary left hand side is equal to real imaginary right hand side. That implies that x, which is my real part on the right hand side, will then be equal to 77 over 13. And it also implies that y, which is my imaginary part on the right hand side, will be equal to 18 over 13. You can either use your calci and work out the decimal equivalent or you can leave the answers as is. Learning outcome 1.2.2, complex roots. Our final section to cover in complex numbers is complex roots. Complex roots are a completely new section in level four mathematics, and they have not been covered in any of the previous levels. Pre-knowledge of factorization and of the quadratic formula is essential for tackling the complex root section successfully. Let's have a look at the quadratic equation. x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Solving for x, we get x squared is equal to 1, and therefore x is equal to the positive or the negative root of 1, and therefore x is equal to positive or negative 1. If we look at the graph of this equation, we can see that the roots or x-intercepts are negative 1 and positive 1. Let's look at another equation. This time, x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Solving for x, we get x squared is equal to negative 1. Therefore, x is equal to the positive or the negative square root of negative 1. We know that this equation cannot be solved using the real number system because there is no real number x that can be squared to give you negative 1. Let's have a look at what the graph looks like for this function. We can see on the graph that this function has no x-intercepts and there are no real roots. Looking at this example again, remember our imaginary number i? We know that i squared is equal to negative 1, so we can substitute i for the square root of negative 1, so that x is now equal to positive or negative i. In standard form, x is equal to 0 plus i or x is equal to 0 minus i. Complex roots always appear in conjugate pairs like this one. So how do we find the roots of more complicated equations? Step 1. First we have to solve the equations using either factorization or the quadratic formula. Step 2. Simplify the roots into complex numbers using i is equal to the square root of negative 1 where necessary. Teaching tip, factorization. Let's look at the first method for finding complex roots, factorization. Remember from previous levels that we can factorize using one of these techniques. Taking out a common factor. Here, x is the common factor. Using the difference of two squares. 
vectorizing trinomials. Grouping. Here we take out 3a plus 4b. Try this example on your own. Solve for x if x to the power of 4 is equal to 81. Let's watch a video of the solution. Let's look at the following example. Solve for x if x to the power 4 is equal to 81. This is an example of a complex root. In order to solve this, we first need to have a 0 on the right hand side. So our first step will then be x to the power 4 minus 81 is equal to zero. We have two terms here separated by a minus sign. The power there is an even number and the 81 is a perfect square so we can factorize this by difference between two squares. Square root of x4 is equal to x squared minus the square root of 81 that is equal to 9 and then Square root of x4 is x squared plus, obviously, 9. Then if you look at your first factor there, x even number, 9 perfect square, so we can even factorize further that part. Square root of x squared is x minus 3. Square root x plus 3 over x squared plus 9 and that all equals to 0. Now, we have three factors here equals to 0, so we're going to apply the zero product rule. In other words, x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x plus 3 is equal to 0, or x squared plus 9 is equal to 0. From here, x is equal to, the negative becomes a positive 3. Here, x is equal to, the positive becomes a negative 3. But here, x squared is equal to minus 9 because the positive 9 becomes a negative 9. Therefore, x is equal to very important plus minus the square root of negative 9. Now, when you have a negative set, immediately that section there tells you that we're going to deal with complex numbers. This is exactly ex the same as plus minus the square root of 9i. Let me just go down the rule that we've used earlier on. The square root of negative a is equal to the square root of ai. Which means this one here. Now I can label all my different roots x1 i will make it x1 it's only a real part so it's 3 plus naught i x2 also only a real part that is equal to minus 3 plus naught i but now x3 here that will be equal to this going to give you only an imaginary part First, it will be naught plus 3i. And then x4. Remember, I'm splitting now the plus minus. That's going to be naught minus 3i. So my x values will be my first complex root, 3 plus naught i, please, real as well as imaginary. My second complex root, minus 3 plus naught i, also real as well as imaginary. 
my third complex root, only imaginary, naught plus 3i, no real part, and my fourth one, naught minus 3i, no real part. And these are my four complex roots, and that's the four values for x. What do we do if a trinomial cannot be factorized? Remember that in level three, students learn to solve quadratic equations that cannot be solved by factorization using the quadratic formula, which is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. To use the quadratic equation to find complex roots, we follow these steps. Step one. Make sure the equation is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Step two, identify the values of a, b, and c from the quadratic equation. Step three, substitute the values of a, b, and c into the quadratic formula. Step four, simplify the expression and substitute i is equal to the square root of negative one. Let's have a look at a video example of how this is done. Solving quadratic equations using complex numbers. Solve for x using complex numbers given 4x squared plus 2x plus 15 is equal to 0. Here we need to use the quadratic equation which goes as We therefore, in this equation, have to assign variables to a, b, and c. Going back to this equation, a is a coefficient of x squared. In this case, it's 4. b is a coefficient of x. In this case, it is 2. c is the constant of this equation. In this case, it's 15. We're therefore going to have to take this equation and substitute on this side. B is 2. B is A is equal to 4. C is equal to 15. All over 2 times 4. We then have to solve this part of the equation first. negative 236 all over 8. Now let us find the square root of negative 236. It's undefined. We therefore have to understand that we cannot proceed with this solution because we cannot find the square root of this negative number. That is why we have to factor in complex numbers, noting that i is equal to negative 1. i squared is equal to positive 1. If we can come back here and multiply this by negative 1, we can have a solution of the square root, which is 15.362. It therefore means that here we must say the solution of this. Let's maybe factor in first what we've done. Let's 
let's go tie it in like that, which therefore reads as at this point we can see that x is equal to negative 2 divided by 8 gives you a quarter which is negative 0 0.25 what does that mean let's prove it negative 2 divided by 8 gives you a quarter plus minus 15.3 362 divided by 8 gives you 1.920 i what have we done now we have solved this equation and solved for x using complex numbers this brings us to the end of module 2 and the close of topic 1 thank you for taking part